Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are doing another Whiteboard Wednesday. And today we're going to talk about uh, something that's been relatively interesting in the in the press lately, and it's this log jam vulnerability. Uh, you guys may have seen uh, it's, it's got its own website, wheatdh.org. It's uh, it seems like these vulnerabilities nowadays are all getting their own websites. I don't even have my own website, but the vulnerabilities have there, so it's uh, it's a good place to be. All right, so what we wanted to do is talk about just a, a high-level overview of what logjam is and why it's, you know, why it's a big deal. And so, um, so the, the basics of logjam, the reason that it's a significant issue, uh, number one is it affects potentially uh, several people, and, uh, and then two, you know, it's, it's a, what it can do is, is pretty devastating if you're actually affected. So if you can imagine, you've got a client who's accessing your web server over here, and this web server is going to be all secure. So I'm going to, I'll put maybe like an HTTPS or um, you know maybe an SSH, you know, kind of kind of connection. But but nonetheless, it's going to be a secure connection. So the client says, "Hey, server, let's make this secure connection." And uh, and so we're going to, in, in order to do that, we're going to use the the transport layer security or the TLS protocol in order to make that happen. And when, when, they when a client establishes the connection with the server, they go through what's called a TLS handshake. And as a part of that, different cipher suites are offered up from the client and the server. And then they have to agree on what they're going to use in terms of cryptography, what's the key length going to be, how strong is this stuff going to be. And so if the client is saying, hey, let's use this really, really strong stuff, but then the server says, well, hey, you know, I can't support that stuff. I've got to use some weaker stuff because I just, I don't know how to talk at that high level. Well, then they're going to they're going to agree kind of down here on some lower level uh, cryptography as they start to talk. And then once they decide what they're all going to talk with and the key exchange and the bulk encryption and all that kind of stuff, then they they and they ultimately decide on all that stuff. And that's the TLS handshake. Uh, then they can start to talk securely. Well, as a part of that handshake, uh, the the one of the initial pieces that happens is uh, what we call the Diffie Hellman key exchange, or frankly, and I'll just write Diffie Hellman key exchange, DH key exchange. And frankly, key exchange happens. Diffie Hellman is one of the most popular um, you know, ways to do the key exchange, and that's where Logjam comes in. Logjam basically says, hey, client, when you access the server, as you're accessing it, I'm going to put man in the middle right here. So a man in the middle is going to inject himself in the middle of this, of this client requesting the server. And then he's going to say, hey, even though the client has requested with, say, this really high level uh, cryptography, this really strong stuff, he is going to say, hey, server, let's, uh, let's come back with a weaker version of this cryptography. And most specifically, it's this 512-bit uh, we'll call it ex, it's called export, export ciphers, okay? And it's, a, and it's the Diffie-Hellman uh, export cipher. And so without getting into all the details of what that is, basically it's a lower level, it's a weaker form of encryption um, that now the server is saying, okay, if you want to go low like that, if you want to go less secure like that, then fine. Uh, so we'll go with the 512-bit Diffie-Hellman export cipher. And so then uh, suddenly that's what they start to communicate with. Well, the man in the middle, uh, this guy, if he can get the server to accept that, what he has done previously is he has pre-computed a whole bunch of potential uh, keys that would be used with this Diffie-Hellman export cipher. And so if you can imagine the, the 512-bit, you know, there's all these different keys that could be used, or whatever. there's all these different possibilities in terms of what the, uh, what the key itself would be. But because it's not a really strong encryption, then that list becomes more finite. And so this guy can, you know, beforehand can pre-compute all these tables of, hey, this is what I think the actual key would be. And if they're going to use this, then I can, I can guess, as it were, as to what that key is. And most of the time, he's going to be right. The, uh, the interesting thing about this is as the client requests, you know, the secure connection with the server, um, the way that the logjam stuff works, or the way that all this works, is this man in the middle would have to be able to crack this in real time. But again, if you go back to the fact that he's already pre-computed a lot of these keys, then he's able to do that in real time. 
And you may ask yourself, well, who in the world has time or maybe the computing power to pre-compute all of these keys? And the answer is there's some, you know, well-funded governments or large organizations or whatever uh, that do have that power. And so it is possible uh, to do this kind of stuff. So essentially what happens is client is requesting to server, man in the middle intercepts that request, server says, hey, you want to have this lower level, this weaker encryption, so okay, fine. And he sends that back and now the client says, okay, we're going to be doing this, this key exchange at the 512-bit Diffie-Hellman export mode level, which is not very secure. And so there are analyzers out there that you can use to see if your browser, uh, if the client browser is affected by this, which most modern ones are, uh, just to give you a little, um, a little you know, uh, data point, I'm, I use uh, Cro Google Chrome most of the time, and I'm on the latest version right now, and it's completely vulnerable to this. So uh, in fact, it's kind of funny, the, the, the weekdh.org, the logjam website, um, pops up a big uh, window and it says, or a little message at the top, it says, hey, you need to upgrade your browser. And of course I can't because I'm, <laughs> I'm on the latest version. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. And then obviously a lot of servers out there have this in their cipher list. It's like, hey, I, you know, a server may say, hey, I can, I can use the, the 512 export. I mean, that's one of my options. I want to be able to offer that. If that's all my client can do, then I want to be able to offer that up. And so, uh, so some servers are vulnerable to this as well. So you could say, well, hey, let's just quit offering this as one of the Cypher suites, and then that would help. Uh, so you could do that. One of the nice things about the Big IP, because this is a Dev Central video, I have to write Big IP up there. One of the nice things about the Big IP is if your client uh, is requesting your, your uh, web server, and he comes through the Big IP in order to do that, a lot of people say, well, hey, we'll let the big IP take care of all this stuff uh, as far as the, the Cypher suites, the SSL ciphers. The big IP, if you use the native or the default SSL stack, then it has the export ciphers turned off by default. And so if you're using the default stuff, then you're good to go if you're, uh, if you're coming through a big IP. Um, in addition to that, there is a way, there's a setting on the big IP where you can force a new Diffie-Hellman key for every single connection, and so that would also help with this. Um, and then the last thing I'll write is this, uh, this I rule, which that's one of the most powerful things about the big IP and, and F5, is the uh, programmability feature of this. And so that's one of the, that's really a cool thing. When Heartbleed happened, or uh, you know, any, any of these like really significant vulnerabilities, um, guys out there on Dev Central were able to say, hey, here's, a, here's an I rule that can mitigate this. Literally, you turn it on right now and it mitigates it right now. And so it's really cool. So uh, Jason Rom actually wrote an I rule that actually blocks this stuff. And essentially what the I rule checks for is if, uh, if a client is coming into the big IP and the big IP request says, hey, let's use one of these crazy low level, you know, Diffie-Hellman export type ciphers, then the iRule is going to check for that and it's going to say, hey, no, 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 we're not even going to allow that to happen. And so we'll, uh, we can, we can uh, link to that iRule and there's a couple of articles out there that, uh, you know, that, that show uh, a little bit more about this. But, it's, um, but anyway, um, so yeah, and, and that's, that's actually for non-SSL traffic uh, with that iRule. But we'll link to that and, uh, uh, or, or for non-SSL offload, I'm sorry. Um, and so anyway, but we'll, we'll link to that I rule off of this video. But again, I just, I wanted to make sure everyone kind of understood the, uh, you know, the basics behind Logjam, what it is. It's a man in the middle attack that forces the server down to use a lesser, um, you know, or, or a weaker encryption for this Diffie-Hellman key exchange. And so this is the critical thing. Let's make sure that our servers don't offer that up as, a, as an option. Um, and then, you know, I, I, if, you, if you have the power to change your clients to not even ask for that, then that would be a good thing as well. So anyway, so that's Logjam. It's good if you have a big IP because you got a lot of different options there. Again, the native stack doesn't even offer up the export um, key uh, or the, yeah, the export cipher. And then you also always have an iRule. And uh, as some of our guys like to say, you know, there's an iRule for that. You can do anything with an iRule. And so, uh, so anyway, and, this, and that's certainly true here as well. So I hope this uh, clears up a little bit about what Logjam is, about you know the the uh, all the all the hype behind it, all the all the crazy talk that's been going on. 
Uh, so I hope you've learned a couple of things here. And, uh, and thanks for watching this uh, Whiteboard Wednesday on Dev Central, and we'll see you guys out there in the community. Thank you.